welcome. This is Business Now, reaching you live from Ivan TV News Studio in Lagos, Nigeria. Coming up. Nigeria loses $5 billion to gold smuggling in six years. Federal government borrows 13.6 trillion naira via bonds in six months amid rising deficit financing. Oil prices leap as China cuts import quotas. U.S. goods trade gap hits record, pending home sales leap. Thanks for joining us. I am Perpetua Fasomi Peter. Now the news in detail. The federal government's bond offer and allotment rose by 1.99 trillion naira in the first six months of this year to 13.66 trillion naira from the 11.67 trillion naira recorded in the corresponding period of last year. The Financial Markets Department of the Central Bank of Nigeria disclosed this in its half-year activity report for 2021. It attributed the rise to government's drive to fund fiscal deficit from the domestic market. The report stated that in the review period, FGN bonds worth $900 billion was offered, while public subscription and sales stood at $1.73 trillion and $1.42 trillion respectively. The amount offered comprised new issues and reopenings of FGN bonds. The federal government has released $16.67 billion for payments of accrued pension rights on the contributory pension scheme. The Director General, National Pension Commission, PENCO, Mrs. Aisha Dahi Umar, has said. Mrs. Dahi Umar, who made this known yesterday in a statement, said the money is for the payments of accrued pension rights for 2021 retirees of Treasury-funded ministries, departments and agencies, MDAs. She said government had earlier settled all areas of accrued pension rights payments to the verified and enrolled retirees up to December 2021. A large number of Nigerians are currently without the national identification number NIN, as the NIN SIM linkage deadline ends tomorrow. As at October, the National Identity Management Commission, NIMC, revealed that 140 million Nigerians were yet to get NIN, with only 64.4 million unique identity numbers issued as at then. However, the figure increased to 70 million this month, meaning only 5.6 million unique names were issued between October and December. Consequently, removing the 5.6 million from 140 million showed that 134.4 million Nigerians are still without NIN. This further means that only about 70 million Nigerians might have linked their SIMs to their NINs, that's NINs, having in mind the multi-SIM nature of Nigerians, where an individual operates three to four networks. The President's National Association of Telecom Subscribers of Nigeria, NATCOMS, Diolu Ogunbanjo, who commended the effort thus far, appealed that until a target of 85% has been met on the NIN SIM exercise before the federal government can put a stop to the registration and take accurate stock of the exercise. The Director General of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, Nimasa, Dr. Bashir Jamo, has urged northern states, especially those with rivers and inland waters in the country, to explore their maritime resources. Jamo was quoted as saying, Majority of people do believe that since we don't have a sea, we don't have maritime. That is not correct. If you go to Egypt, it is an artificial lake they use. End of quote. He added that if harnessed properly, maritime resources would benefit the indigenous of the north. Jamu said, quote, Nigeria is Nigeria regardless of where we come from. But what is disturbing me is that the north is lagging behind in the issue of the maritime industry. End of quote. Ibadan Electricity Distribution Company PLC has reinaugurated the meter asset provider scheme as it steps up efforts to enhance meter rollout across its areas of operations. The chief operating officer of the company, John Ayodele, said this in Abuja Wednesday during a roadshow organized by the company. A company statement quoted him as saying that the meter rollout would commence immediately following the directive given by the National Electricity Regulatory Commission to give customers the choice to purchase meters. The COO, who was represented by the company's head of strategy, Mr. Peter Oni, spoke during the roadshow aimed at sensitizing members of the public. 
According to him, a single phase meter goes for 63,061 naira, 32 kobo, while a three phase meter costs 117,910 naira, 69 kobo. He stated there were no charges or processing fees. He said customers would get a refund of the cost of the meter through equal installment of energy credit whenever they vend over a period of 36 months. The federal government has approved a sum of 185 billion naira for the construction and realization of the Calabar E2 highway. The amount was part of the 600 billion naira raised from tax credit window by the Federal Inland Revenue Service from the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation to fund critical infrastructure in the country. The Senior Special Assistant to the President, Major General Muhammad Buhari, beg your pardon, President Muhammad Buhari, on Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Ita Inang, disclosed this while briefing journalists after a tour of the project on Wednesday. He said that the project was awarded in three tranches, adding that the first phase was awarded to Judas Berger for 54 billion naira. According to him, the construction company has started works on the axis between Odupan in Cross River State and Ibiono in Akwaibom State. He added that the sum 52 billion naira was approved for the Chinese Civil Engineering and Construction Company, while Sematech was given the sum of 79 billion naira for road construction and four bridges. The federal government says Nigeria has lost 5 billion naira to gold smuggling in activities six years. The Minister of Mines and Steel Development, Dr. Uchi Oga, who made the disclosure at the State House on Wednesday, said the government had taken steps towards addressing the problem. This came as the president, Muhammad Buhari, directed the Presidential Artisanal Gold Mining Development Initiative to submit a six-month progress report on the Solid Minerals Development Fund designed to capture accruals from investments in the sector. He also charged PAGMI to intensify operations in the mining sector by ensuring that investments go beyond artisanal and small-scale levels. Buhari spoke on Wednesday during a briefing by the steering committee and management team of PAGMI at the State House, Abuja. The special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Femi Adishino, disclosed this in a statement titled, Ramp up operations in solid mineral sector. President Buhari directs PAGMI calls for six-month progress report. According to the president, all stakeholders should conclude their ongoing assignment of recommending a portion of accruals to be dedicated to the Solid Minerals Development Fund. Commission on Tuesday said it was set to close out the 2020 Marginal Field Bid Round program. It said the NUPRC had put in place all necessary machinery to progress the bid round exercise to conclusion in line with the Petroleum Industry Act 2021. The Chief Executive Officer of the Commission, Binga Komolafe, in a notice to participants of the program on Tuesday, indicated that an in-house work team had already been constituted to deal with outstanding issues. He said the issues include distilling and addressing the concerns of awardees with a view to closing out matters affecting multiple awardees per asset and formation of special purpose vehicles by awardees in line with their respective letters of award. Kamalafe in a statement issued by the Commission enjoined awardees with indicated issues to avail themselves of the resolution mechanism provided by the NUPRC in the overriding national interest. He also stated that the Commission was collaborating with leaseholders to agree on transition mechanisms in line with the PIA and aspirations of government for the marginal field build round exercise. He said a 45-day period for payment of signature bonus by successful awardees as stipulated in the marginal field guidelines has, had elapsed. He, however, assured those who had fully paid their signature bonuses that the Commission would ensure that all applicable guidelines to enable them to progress to the next stage of the exercise were fully implemented. The World Bank, in its latest Commodity Markets Outlook forecast, has projected the average crude oil prices at $74 per barrel of crude oil in 2022. According to the report, crude oil prices are projected to average $74 billion per barrel, $74 dollar per barrel in 2022, up from a projected $70 per barrel in 2021, as oil demand strengthens and reaches pre-pandemic levels, while natural gas and coal prices are expected to fall in 2022 as production constraints ease. 
Data gleaned from the report show that crude oil prices averaged $72 per barrel in third quarter, an increase of 7% on the previous quarter, but with prices fluctuating significantly during the period. The Lagos State House of Assembly on Wednesday evening passed the 2022 budget estimate with a slight increase of the grand total from the initial 1.38 trillion naira to 1.758 trillion naira. The budget was passed at a seating presided over by the Speaker of the House, Mudashi Robasa, after a presentation of the report by Gbola Ishao, Chairman of the Committee on Economic Planning and Budget. Ishao, after the plenary, explained that the total budget size passed has the addition of leftovers from the previous allocations in the 2021 budget. He said the leftover was rolled into a contingency fund in the year 2022 budget. He also put the capital and recurrent expenditure ratio at 66 to 34. While the recurrent expenditure is 591 billion naira, the capital expenditure is 1.166 trillion naira, which brings the budget total size to 1.758 trillion naira. According to him, the loans, bonds and ISPO funds are captured in the budget that was passed. Speaking after the passage of the budget, Obasa commended his colleagues for working as seriously to ensure that the appropriation bill was passed. He urged them to also remain conscious of their safety as well as the safety of their neighbors. President Muhammadu Buhari on Wednesday assured the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria man that federal government will take appropriate measures to improve access to foreign exchange for importation of raw materials and machines that are not locally available. The manufacturers are taking the challenges impeding their business operations requiring immediate solutions to improve the manufacturing environment to the president. The manufacturers listed inadequate supply of foreign exchange, inadequate electricity supply, Poor access to long-term fund, patronage of made in Nigeria goods and local content development, as well as the looming increases in tax rate, among others, to the government for immediate solution. The president, in his response, told the Mansu Ahmed-led executives of MAN that the relevant ministry would, in addition, revisit their concerns about the increase in excise duties on the identified products and other tariff-related matters. Etang William, chairman of the Cross River State Committee of the whole House and Speaker of the Assembly, has given reasons why the state budget size was increased from 276 billion naira as presented by Governor Ben Ayade to 354 billion naira. The Speaker, who presided over the Committee of the whole House after the budget passes the third reading, stated that soon after the Governor presented the budget, Ted Fund agreed to support the Cross River State Government with funds amounting to 40 billion naira to be directed at the following projects Tertiary Cancer Research Center, Tertiary Orthopedic Center, University Library for British Canadian School, and Tertiary Tourism Center. According to the Speaker, approval for procurement of critical hospital equipment like PET scan linear accelerator and cyclotron were received after the budget had been presented by the Governor. Eteng also emphasized that the items will be bought at the current exchange rate, which brought in an additional 4.5 billion naira. You're watching Business Now. Still to come, more stories from Africa. Stay with us. Most people don't understand the magic of the perfect skin, the allure of the well-pampered skin. We bounce from skincare products to skincare products, from spa to spa. Looking for that ideal solution. I found the solution. And it's Blemiviv Skin Care and Spa. My name is Neil, and I'm proud to be a part of the Blemiviv family. Clean
freshly meted professional dry cleaners best in dry cleaning and laundry services that meets the needs of our consumers yeah swift dry cleaners demeted swift dry cleaners demeted And quick delivery, yeah. With dry cleaners to meet it. With dry cleaners to meet it. With dry cleaners to meet it. For clean wash and quick delivery. Ooh. Swift dry cleaners. Clean wash, quick delivery. True unripe plantain flour is a 100% natural flour gotten from the processing of unripe plantain. It contains no addictive and has a net content of 500 grams. True unripe plantain flour contains vitamin A, B6 and C. It is gluten free and rich in calcium. Consuming through unripe plantain flour helps to build and strengthen stronger bones and can be a great meal for diabetic patients. It decreases your chances of constipation as it has a high fiber content and provides you with a low fat diet. Here are some steps to prepare your through unripe plantain flour. Firstly, mix through on ripe plantain flour with hot water in a pot and gradually add water till you achieve desired thickness. Place over medium heat and turn very well for 4 to 5 minutes to get the right texture. Mold into a bowl and place in a bowl and allow to cool. Serve with your choice of soup. Through on ripe plantain flour, can be eaten with any variety of soup, be it your oifo or ha, oifo or nubu, begiri, ewedu or your miyang kuka to get your through on ripe plantain flour. Contact us at 12 Oluwera Isheri Road by First Welder Bus Stop of Omole Phase 2, Oluwera, Lagos, Nigeria. Or call 070-66-638213 or 081-6397-4447. Distributors are needed nationwide. <laughs> oh boy, winning you was so easy. I just couldn't stand those your powerful shots. That's what happened. <laughs> really? <laughs> Let's go to my place for dinner. <clears throat> mm, this fufu is so nice. It's true unripe plantain flour. True unripe plantain flour is delicious. Yes, true unripe plantain flour is what I serve my husband for swallows. It's easy to prepare. Fortified with vitamin A, low in sugar and cholesterol, rich in fiber that helps the heart, builds and strengthens the bone, and his energy level <laughs> is boosted. True unripe plantain flour, no additives, 100% natural, a product of Pali Agro Products Nigeria. Nigeria. Through unripe plantain floor, available in all leading stores nationwide. Most people don't understand the magic of a perfect skin. The allure of a well-pampered skin. We bounce from skincare products to skincare products. From spa to spa. Looking for that ideal solution. I found a solution. And it's Blemiviv Skin Care and Spa. My name is Neil, 
and I'm proud to be a part of the Blemithi family. Glad to know you're still with us. Moving on to stories from Africa, Kenya has inaugurated the Kenya Shipyards Limited facility in the port city of Mombasa. The Maritime Executive reported that the nation said the new yard would have the capacity to handle vessels of more than 4,000 tons and 150 meters in length. According to the report, the yard is a strategic infrastructure asset, enabling it to tap into the multi-billion dollar global shipbuilding and repair market. President Uhuru Kenyatta at the facility's inauguration said, quote, The key subsectors of the blue economy, which include maritime transport and logistics, fisheries as well as shipbuilding and repair, represent low-hanging fruit that must be exploited. End of quote. The report said the new KSM Mombasa shipyard facility has the country's longest slipway for construction repair, refitting and maintenance. And on the foreign scene, oil prices eased on Thursday after the world's top importer China cut the first batch of crude import allocations for 2022. Offsetting the impact of U.S. data showing fuel demand had held up despite soaring Omicron coronavirus infections. Brent crude futures fell 41 cents or 0.5 percent to 78.82 dollars a barrel at 755 GMT. Down for the first time in four days, U.S. West Texas Intermediate WTI crude futures slid 33 cents or 0.4 percent to 76.23 dollars a barrel after six straight sessions of gains. Oil prices spurred earlier gains after China, the world's top crude importer, lowered the first batch of 2022 import quotas to mostly independent refiners by 11% below the comparable year earlier quota, industry sources have said. Market sentiment weakened on worries that the Chinese government could take stricter actions against the tea ports, a Singapore-based analyst had said, referring to the independent refiners. U.S. Energy Information Administration data on Wednesday showed crude oil inventories fell by 3.6 million barrels in the week to December 24, which was more than, which was more than analysts polled by Reuters had expected. The U.S. trade deficit in goods mushroomed to the widest ever in November as imports of consumer goods shot to a record ahead of the second straight COVID-distorted holiday shopping season, along with industrial supplies, while exports slipped after a historic gain a month earlier. The goods trade gap reported Wednesday by the Commerce Department is likely to remain historically high as long as the coronavirus pandemic continues, economists have said. The emergence of the fast-spreading Omicron variant of COVID-19 that has driven U.S. and global caseloads to a record this week may exacerbate it further in the next term if it limits American consumer spending on services and restocks demand for imported goods. Omicron also stands as a downside risk in the housing market. And coming up after now is entertainment business news. And welcome to Entertainment Business News. I am Michelle Avenue. A Los Angeles business manager whose clients had included Nicki Minaj and the Kardashians was killed and her boyfriend was charged with murder and torture, authorities said. Police found Angela Kukwatsky, 55, dead in her car in Simi Valley, northwest of Los Angeles, days after she was reported missing, police said in a statement. Her 49-year-old boyfriend, Jason Barker, was arrested Tuesday and charged with counts of murder and torture, authorities and public records said. Kukwaski died from sharp and blunt force injuries to the head and neck and strangulation, the Ventral County coroner said. A criminal compliant from Los Angeles County prosecutors, Alex Barker, also tortured her with a knife before her death. Moving on, Apple's decision to ditch Intel paid off this year. The pivot allowed Apple to completely rethink the mark which had started to grow still with an aging design and iterative annual upgrades. Following the divorce from Intel, Apple had launched far more exciting computers which paired with an ongoing pandemic that has forced people to work and learn from home, having sent Apple's Mac business soaring in April 2021. 
CEO Tim Cook said during the company's fiscal second quarter earnings call that the M1 chip helped fuel the 70.1% growth in Apple's Mac revenue, which hit $9.1 billion during that quarter. The growth continued in fiscal Q3 when Mac revenue was up to 16% year over year. That quarter, it launched the all-new iMac, which offered redesigned super-thin metal body that looks like a screen popped up on a stand. And that's it on Entertainment Business News. I am Michelle Abano. Thank you, Michelle. And now, sports business. Welcome to sports business. ESPN could see up to $400 million in lost advertising revenue if key college football games are cancelled. College football's postseason brings in an estimated $350 million to $400 million each year for the Disney-owned network. However, five bowl games have been cancelled so far, and with the Omicron variant of COVID-19 spreading quickly, it is possible that additional games, including the three final playoff matchups, could go as well. ESPN is most of the way through a 12-year deal to air the tournament worth a reported $470 million per season. The deal includes the 14 playoff and six associated bowl games through 2025. The College Football Playoff Management Committee last week announced that teams would forfeit games if they do not have enough available players and the makeup games would not be allowed. Should all four teams in the college playoff semifinals be ineligible to play by January 15th, the national championship will be declared vacant. And still talking sports business, Qatar's World Cup accommodations are running scarce as roughly only 90,000 rooms will be available. Qatar is expecting a $20 billion economic boost from hosting the World Cup next year, but that number could change as the country looks to accommodate more visitors. The country's goal is to attract 1.2 million soccer fans for the event, but only one hotel is available for the entirety of the tournament with the rest already sold out. The tournament runs from November 21st to December 18th, and the majority of rooms have already been booked in blocks by organizers, ensuring availability for teams and those working the event. Qatar's Supreme Committee disclosed that roughly 90,000 rooms will be available for the public via a website. The number is a mere fraction of the 850,000 overseas visitors Qatari officials expect to require rooms. In its most recent data, the Qatar Tourism Authority said there are 33,208 rooms in hotels and apartments, and a number of cruise ships will dock in Doha, totaling 4,000 cabins. A campsite will also be available in the desert. Rooms on the open market are going for more than $1,000 per night. And that's it on Sports Business. I'm Samson Olede. And that's a wrap on the news at this hour. Thank you for watching. I am Perpetua Fasomi Peter. To enjoy the rest of the day and bye for now.